All right, students, so today we're going to learn about prokaryotes uh, versus eukaryotes versus viruses. As you can see, here's a quick overview. Prokaryotes are also known as bacteria. Um, they include the bacteria kingdom, and they don't have a nucleus. They don't have membrane-bound organelles either. And you can see here you got the eukaryotes, which include uh, fungi, animals, plant, and protists. And then you have these, which are not classified as alive because they don't have cells like the prokaryotes and eukaryotes do. They're non-cellular or acellular. They're really just proteins um, surrounding DNA. And since they don't have cells to kind of stay alive, they um, attach themselves to host cells and inject their DNA and have the host um, give them their energy and reproduce their offspring for them. Let's take a look at some points to remember. Every organism has cells. So every living thing has cells that are either prokaryotic or eukaryotic. Prokaryotes don't have a nucleus and don't have membrane-bound organelles like mitochondria, chloroplasts, um, ER, those types of things. Eukaryotes do have a nucleus and membrane-bound organelles. Prokaryotes are small, they're simple, they're unicellular organisms that evolved first and are also called bacteria. Eukaryotes are bigger, more complex, um, their organelles are more compartmentalized, more organized. They evolved after and include animal, plant, fungi, and protists. Viruses are acellular, again, they have no cells, and they need to invade host cells in order to reproduce. Plant and animals uh, are eukaryotic, but plants have a cell wall, chloroplasts, and a big central vacuole, and animal cells have lysosomes. All living things have one or of two types of cells, okay? So if you're alive, you're a cellular, either prokaryote or eukaryote. Let's look at prokaryotes. Again, small, simple, they just have DNA all over the place. Usually it's circular, and it's all over the place. And um, you have eukaryotes, which uh, examples are the plant and animal cells. Here you have a nucleus, which is not in the prokaryote. And in the nucleus, again, it's so it could protect the DNA a little bit better than a bacteria does. And you have all these membrane-bound organelles that are not in the bacteria, like mitochondria, ER, Golgi, and uh, lysosomes, and things like that. And here, again, are the viruses, the smallest of all these. So these are the biggest, medium, and then the smallest. And again, just DNA surrounded by protein. And you can see different virus types. They're not all the same. The one that you see famously in textbooks, that's the one that attacks a bacteria. It's called a bacteriophage. And then you have other kinds. This one attacks the tobacco plant, and this one is the influenza virus, the flu virus. So they're all different, different forms and shapes. Again, eukaryote versus prokaryote. Just remember that eukaryotes have a nucleus and membrane-bound organelles. Prokaryotes don't have a nucleus. They just have their DNA is circular. It's all over the place. <clears throat> okay, prokaryotic and eukaryotic similarities. Okay, so in every cell must have the following, okay, prokaryotes or eukaryotes, it doesn't matter. They all have DNA. They need some genetic information to control their processes. Um, they must have a cell membrane to control what goes in and out, so you have it here and here. They must have ribosomes to build proteins, to build themselves and make, make their traits and everything, so every cell has that. They must have cytoplasm, which is liquid, um, the liquid where there's water and dissolved nutrients that are important for nutrition and for the reactions the enzymes are there and let's look a little bit closely at bacteria here's one thing they do have they have a cell wall kind of like plant cells do but the cell wall is made up of a different material we're not going to go into that right now but they have a cell wall they have a cell membrane again their dna no nucleus right the dna is all over the place they have the ribosomes they have some pili which help them attach to things um, they have a plasmid, um, it's a big circle of DNA, and we'll see that later in genetic engineering that it's used a lot. Their cytoplasm and all that. And they have a flagella to help them uh, with movement so they can move around. And how do we kill bacteria? <clears throat> so either you could wait for your immune system to destroy it with antibodies, or you can take medication called antibiotics. Antibiotics are meant to kill bacteria by destroying the cell wall. Once they destroy the cell wall, water rushes in and the cell pops. And there you go. You kill the bacteria. Let's do a check for understanding. Again, let's label the following as prokaryotes, eukaryotes, and viruses. Pause the video 
and practice. Okay, let's continue now. So if you look carefully, you don't see a nucleus. You do see that it's a cell. So if it's a cell, it's either prokaryote, you, prokaryote or eukaryote, and you know no nucleus, so it's prokaryote. This one, again, has a cell wall, so it is a cell. I don't see a nucleus here. I see the DNA all over the place. Again, another prokaryote. Then we got here, um, we see a cell. It is a cell, and it has a nucleus and membrane bound organelles. That gives it away that it's a um, eukaryote. This one specifically is an animal cell. You look here, I don't see the word cell, cell wall, cell membrane. I don't see anything like that. It looks very small. It's a virus. Here, I could take a look here. It looks like a cell. Um, I do see a DNA, but then again, I, I could tell that it's a bacteria. It's cell, it's got cell wall, no nucleus bacteria. Try again with these. Okay, let's take a look here. This is a virus. I just see RNA and proteins. I don't see cell or anything on it, so virus. Same thing here. I just see DNA and a bunch of protein structures, so it's a virus again. This one looks like a bacteria, but you got to be careful. This is a protist. It's actually a eukaryote. How can I tell? It's got a nucleus. These get confused often with bacteria. Protists are uh, sometimes single cellular um, that look like bacteria, but they have a nucleus. And then again, I have a virus because I don't have a cell there. And this one, it's DNA and actually has a cell wall and cell membrane. So this is also a bacteria. And let's try this. If you look here you can see that it has a vacuole, mitochondria, chloroplast, cell wall, and a nucleus. So it's definitely a eukaryote, and most likely it's a plant cell. This one's also a plant cell, and I know it's a eukaryote because it has a nucleus and membrane-bound organelles. And then there's this idea of the endosymbiotic hypothesis um, for the origin of mitochondria and chloroplast, so the idea of how they came about. So the idea is that you had a host cell, and it was a big cell, big bacteria cell, that happened to gobble up um, these small prokaryotes that were photosynthetic. And so it gobbled this one up, and it gobbled this one up, and kind of had this relationship where it said, hey, look, I'll take both of you guys in, and I'll protect you, and while you guys give me food. And this one made it food, and this one broke down to food. And so now they're in the bodies of these um, cells, and later on, we realized that it turned out that there's evidence of this of this happening because we see this DNA in the mitochondria and the DNA in the chloroplast, and they're very similar to bacteria that we have today. So that this theory is very, very well accepted, and that there was a cell that was a bacteria that gobbled up other bacteria, and now today they're the chloroplasts inside our cells and the mitochondria inside our cells. The lytic cycle is a viral reproductive cycle in which a virus takes over all metabolic activities of a cell, replicates itself many times, then destroys the host cell. A bacteriophage attaches to a bacterial host cell by recognizing and locking onto a specific receptor site on the surface of the host cell. The virus then injects its DNA into the host cell. The empty coat remains outside the cell. Inside the cell, the viral DNA breaks down the host cell's DNA. The virus then takes over the total metabolic activities of the host cell. By using the raw materials present in the cell, the viral DNA directs the production of new virus parts. The newly produced viral components are assembled into complete new virus particles. The host cell bursts open and releases 100 to 200 new virus particles. These new particles can begin another cycle by infecting nearby cells. Okay, a couple of things you need to know is how do you kill viruses? Um, viruses, pretty much, you have to wait for your immune system to kill them. And that's what doctors say. They say sometimes, you know what, if you have a viral infection, um, just drink a lot of fluids and your body will take care of it and they're not going to give you a medicine um, If you take a medicine over the counter or anything that the doctor gives you It's more just to alleviate the symptoms, but the only thing that kills viruses as far as we know is your body um, You can get an, a vaccination, but eventually that vaccine causes your body to protect yourself So the only thing that kills it again is your body your antibodies your white blood cells 
Um, again, remember that viruses don't have ribosomes, they don't have cells. And so because they don't have ribosomes, they can't build their own proteins. They can't create their own viruses or reproduce. So they need whole cells to do that.